We have a little bit of new world news for you guys here in this one. There's a new update hitting the PTR. And in this update, there are some things that are going to affect that hatchery. I posted a guide to the hatchery a few days ago. And so this is just a follow-up video to some of that information. Some of the mechanics are going to change and some of the rewards are going to change that you get out of that event. In my opinion, these are getting changed for the better, but we're going to go over here and take a look at the patch notes. And I'd love to know your opinion on what's happening with these changes as well. So just for reference, this patch is hitting on June the 15th which is today the recording of this video this is currently now live on the ptr the first thing that they're changing is they're replacing the models and icons for the artisan items they no longer use the glass or transparent models but the new intended ones instead i posted a video about this as well and showed off those items and i really thought that those were placeholders they were in fact placeholders so now we have the new look and this is what that new look looks like it looks kind of like a, a little bit more of a royal look if you will for some of the weapons and the shields but this is what the new look looks like it's just replacing that glass look so this is what you can expect whenever you see these items come in on live they also then made a couple more changes to the artisan items they now have the proper durability and weight assignments they then changed some umbral shard rewards for the sandworm encounter they are increasing those rewards you now get 500 per kill as previously 100 you now get 2,000 umbrals in the daily chest that was previously a thousand and you now get 8,000 in the weekly chest which was previously 2,000 so a massive bump in umbral shards that you're going to receive from your weekly chest that is is crazy you're gonna get 8,000 umbral shards through weekly chest by killing the sandworm to me i think this is perfectly fine because really to get one item all the way up to 625 it takes roughly 9,000 shards so i think this is a good change coming on in the sandworm because that trial is supposed to be some of the hardest content in the game once that trial hits live i will have a video coming out for that i wasn't able to record one because i was on vacation whenever this thing hit the ptr i might be able to get some footage for the ptr moving forward but i'm probably going to wait until it, this hits live in order to bring you guys some of the content for the sandworm then we also have some changes to the seasonal content they're fixing an issue where target mark would appear over players head but haddish would instead burn out towards the center of his arena so you'll see some of these things we're about to go over for the seasonal content in the guide that i did previously for the hatchery these are the changes that i want to bring to you guys attention and especially the next section that talks about the rewards that you're going to get from doing the hatchery if you're interested in that video or interested in the full guide for that video i'll make sure to link that down in the description below just bear in mind that these changes are coming in and they are currently on the ptr i would imagine these are going to make it to live or they might change again and if they do i'll make sure to keep you guys updated of course they also fixed an issue that would cause haddish azar's meteor shower warning marker to not appear on both players heads they fixed an issue that caused haddish azar's flame waves to not reach the corners of his arena so this is the big one right here and this is really one of the main reasons i wanted to record the video in the video that i did showing you the entire guide there's a method or there was a method on the ptr that you could just cheese this one section or this one mechanic of this fight you could just go to the corners of the arena and the flames would not reach that area and that is a very big mechanic for the fight now what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to work your way through the gaps of the flames in order to avoid the damage and then continue the fight it's gonna make this fight a whole lot harder and it's gonna make that encounter a whole lot harder but if they did change it it was not intended and now they will reach the corner so there's not gonna be a safe place to get away from this flame wave mechanic they also fixed an issue that caused the explosive sulfur core to kill players with explosive damage after it was destroyed so this was not supposed to be happening this is another mechanic within that expedition that's explained in that video but they did fix the problem that after it's destroyed it was killing players that was a problem and now that's going to be fixed moving forward which is a great thing they modified haddish Cesar's flame vacuum so that it always pulls the players towards him and then they fixed an issue that caused enraged devour drone to get stuck below the ground so all of these changes are coming in for the hatchery i just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of those especially the flame waves because i didn't think it was working as intended on the ptr but that's how we did it anyway whenever we did the video so now just know and be aware that this is a change coming in you're no longer going to be able to cheese that mechanic then here's some other really big changes that i wanted to bring to your attention and these are excellent changes in my opinion the corsica bandit name set they're replacing freedom with human ward so before the corsica bandit set had refreshing evasion physical aversion and freedom well now it's going to have refreshing evasion physical aversion and human ward this is excellent news because really nobody's going to wear a refreshing evasion physical aversion and freedom piece because it doesn't have resilience or ward on there and those two perks are pretty much mandatory whenever you're running either pve or pvp so now they're making these into pve items and you're going to have human ward coming in on this gear 
at least it's going to be usable for something i for one am very happy that they're making that change because without ward or resilient on there these items were going to be pretty much useless to everyone that was going to get them so this is great news they also are making the same change to the scholarly jongler set they're replacing invigorated with human ward they're doing it with ward master too they're replacing invigorated with human ward the scholarly jongler set previously had refreshing striking fortification and invigorated so now it's going to have refreshing striking fortification and human ward the horde master set is the same it had refreshing striking fortification and invigorated it is now going to have refreshing striking fortification and human ward again great change in my opinion something that needed to happen and i'm very happy to see these items get changed into something that is actually going to be usable and then we have some changes coming into the oasis grave robber weapons and then the water seeker wanderer and warmonger set you're now going to be able to get guaranteed bane and guaranteed ward perks on these sets before these were just completely random perks that you were going to get which in my opinion is not great well now we are at least going to be able to get bane and ward on these items and the items are going to be guaranteed purple rarity or better which is an excellent change whenever you run an event like this is supposed to be an end game trial it is absolutely terrible to get like a green or blue item out of these so thank goodness they are going to be purple rarity or better and they have either a guaranteed ward or bane perk on them which in my opinion is a great change we also have another really big change coming in they added a 15 percent chance to get a golden scarab from the bonus box and changed the chance of writ of adventure to 15 percent the writ of adventure currently at least to my knowledge can only be purchased once a day from the faction vendor i think that's how it is on live so now we're going to have another option to be able to get these these from a different method i think you can get these from quests and brimstone sands as well but those are very limited so it is nice to see that come in and now we also have a 15 percent chance to get golden scarabs from the bonus box which is pretty big and then they also increase the amount of procedural gear awarded from a normal run from two to six and then along with this patch comes in some other small changes to raid groups the ux ui and then the trial of the devourer nothing too noteworthy there i'll make sure to link these down in the description below if you're interested in reading over these for yourself but those are the changes that's what i wanted to make sure to bring to you you guys i wanted to bring this information to you because again i did the complete guide over the hatchery and a lot of this information has changed some of the rewards have changed some of the mechanics are going to change and all in all i think it's changing for the better i'm pretty excited to see the gear changes coming in that are guaranteeing ward and bane on the items i think whenever you're running pve events like this that are in-game events you should be guaranteed with some decent gear at least a reason to go farm these out before those name sets were not good at all no one was going to want to run the hatchery but now with the changes to those dropping guaranteed human ward gear it'll give people a much bigger reason to go run this event versus just hoping you get something good out of it from the random rolls and then getting this trash named gear this is an excellent change and i hope they continue to move in this direction in the future who knows what the gearing changes hold for new world in the future and what they're doing with the gear rework i have no idea but for now this is on the PTR and at least these are good changes moving forward. I would love to know what you guys think about these changes and if you're looking forward to the trial being on live or not. What are you looking forward to the most out of season two? The trial is pretty fun in my opinion. I do enjoy it. And again, if you want to see the complete walkthrough of that fight, I'll make sure to link that down in the description below. But that's going to do it for this one, boys and girls. I just wanted to make sure you are aware of these changes and aware of this new world news. But thank you guys so much for hanging out. I greatly appreciate it. If you enjoy new world, enjoy new world content, please make sure to like and subscribe. I'd appreciate that as well. And of course, we stream every Monday through Friday over at twitch.tv slash BDLG. Would love to see you come hang out over there. That'll do it for this one. We'll see you in the next one.